All right, everyone, we're going to get started here. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on uh, where you are. I hope that you're all happy and healthy, um, and I hope you're all managing our new working situations and the evolving needs of our customers uh, during these uh, unprecedented changes uh, that are currently going on. Uh, my name is Jared Tun, and I will be one of your co-hosts today. Uh, for those of you uh, who I've not been able to meet in person yet, I hope uh, we'll be able to do so uh, in an event or road show or meeting uh, here soon once it's safe to begin uh, our regular travel again. I also want to uh, introduce my teammate today uh, and co-host Dan Nolan. Uh, Dan was recently promoted to the role of sales engineer at Campango uh, after spending a couple years as a senior business analyst on our delivery and implementation team. Um, so he's, he's certified uh, in multiple products, including uh, Service Cloud, and he has extensive experience uh, implementing it as well. So uh, again, Dan, congrats on, on that promotion and thank you for helping host today. Um, Thanks, Jared, you bet. Nice to meet everyone. A uh, couple quick notes. Uh, make sure to utilize that Q&A tab uh, if you folks have any questions. Um, might not be able to get to them till the end, but we'll, we'll hit on every question that we do get. Um, and we will be recording this. So, um, you know, we always post all of our webinars to our YouTube page after the fact. So if you want to rewatch, if you have to hop off early, if you want to share with um, some teammates or friends, um, you can find that on our YouTube page and we'll share out a, a copy of that. Uh, in a follow-up email afterwards as well. Um, what we're going to cover today is the state of customer service, um, the characteristics of a strong customer service team, how Service Cloud plays into that and helps uh, support those customer service teams, and then how to talk about Service Cloud with your customers. And, and now is a great time to talk about solutions that help empower customer service team, let's face it. Um, they need to provide fantastic experiences for their customers. It's getting ever more competitive. And Salesforce Service Cloud is, is one of the best foundational tools to accomplish that. So, so let's get to it. So just a quick background on Campango for those that aren't super familiar with us and, and what we really do and what we specialize in. Um, we are a Salesforce service shop. So we are a uh, systems implementation partner um, that works solely with Salesforce. Uh, we're based in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin with headquarters, uh, I'm sorry, uh, headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with offices in Chicago, New York, and Atlanta. Uh, we currently have a team of uh, just under 60 experts now with uh, over 100 certifications. Uh, for those that don't know, we were actually acquired by ScanSource uh, late in 2018. So we're, we're part of the IntelliSys ScanSource family uh, and we're really here to, to be a, a core part of of this, this team of companies that helps support you guys and gives the best experiences that you can for your end customers. Um, you know, the industries that we tend to focus on um, but are not limited to, uh, you'll see a list right here. I won't read them off to you. Um, you guys can always review this after the fact. If you have questions, obviously always reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, I'm here to help you guys. Um, that's, that's what I'm here for. So please utilize me um, and we can go deeper into this uh, if you have, uh, the desire to do so. But um, some of our core products over here as well, uh, including Service Cloud, which we'll be focusing on today. Uh, I do want to make a note that we will have uh, several more webinars over the coming months um, where we continue this foundational series of talking about, um, you know, some of the, the key uh, core products that Salesforce offers. Um, also that Campango has uh, extensive experience in. So keep an eye out for some uh, emails or some uh, social posts with some more information in the, in the coming weeks for that. And our core services, we're, we're here to implement, we're here to optimize. Um, Lightning migrations is a really key conversation to have, especially if you guys have customers that are existing users uh, of Salesforce. If they have not migrated to the Lightning interface, that's something they really, really need to consider uh, doing if they're going to actually utilize the full uh, capabilities of the Salesforce platform. Um, we do have the ability for custom development, um, as well as uh, third-party integrations, uh, including with uh, CCAS Solutions, UCAS, um, and many other suppliers that reside within the channel. And what we're here to help you do, uh, folks, is we're here to provide that full suite of customer experience solutions. Um, you know, there's, there's great CCAS tools out there. There's great uh, SD-WAN tools, helping customers with their bandwidth and, and, you know, making sure they have all their hardware they need. We help complete that full circle where we are the pro serve piece that utilizes the Salesforce platform to truly give 
that customer a 360 degree view of, of their end users and, and their business. And it expands your selling power into not only talking to those technology leaders, but also expanding into marketing, into sales, into finance. You want that full C-suite uh, you know, to have your ear because you are that trusted consultant for them that's going to be an invaluable uh, partner uh, as over the course of, of their journey as a business. And at the end of the day, we're, we're going to make you guys more money. Um, you know, we're not a monthly recurring revenue model, but um, we provide some really great revenue, evergreen revenue opportunities um, for you guys. Uh, and really all we rely on you is to help identify those opportunities uh, and help manage those relationships with us. We quick want to illustrate the engagement model that we use because we know that we're not a traditional supplier. Uh, in the channel. Uh, so we really want to make this clear. You guys, as our sales partners, you're the trusted technology advisors and consultants. You guys have those close relationships to your customers. You've molded those relationships, you know, if not years over decades. You're that trusted person that's a qualified advisor for them that, that you're really helping them avoid timely RFPs, working with too many vendors. We rely on you guys and we help enable and educate you to do this, but we want you to help unearth the true needs of your customers when it involves CRM uh, and integrating with various solutions that they might be using. And obviously, uh, Intellisys does a fantastic job of doing all the things that a great master agent does. Uh, they provide that ecosystem that we thrive in, um, you know, us as suppliers and sister companies, you guys as sales partners. And, and we fit, you know, directly in there with uh, multiple ties. Um, with direct relationships to you, to Intellisys, uh, to the end customers, uh, and then also to Salesforce, which we bring in last here. What we wanna illustrate here is, is what we look like with our pre-sales process and how these relationships interact. And we also wanna show the flow of what's also important, the financial aspect to it. So I'm quickly just gonna illustrate here um, what a high level uh, start to a project would look like. So, you as a sales partner, you identify that opportunity. And our channel team, myself, Tom Martin, will meet with you and, and we'll discuss that project and qualify that lead. At that time, you know, we'll meet with the, the customer along with you uh, to help manage that introduction and that relationship. Uh, and we'll further qualify that project to get more information from the customer to get dive a little deeper and make sure it's a valid opportunity and a good fit for Campango. Um, then we're gonna assign the appropriate personnel internally uh, and we're gonna enter it into the Salesforce partner community. Uh, we'll be contacted by Salesforce, make that introduction to both you guys and your customers. And then real key here is that we help manage that Salesforce relationship. Um, so it's all about the right time, the right licenses, the right price. Uh, we know when Salesforce discounts, we know the products and clouds that your customers are gonna need, not just what Salesforce is trying to sell you. Uh, and, and we're gonna make sure that they're getting the, the appropriate discounts, um, like I mentioned. Um, at this time, Salesforce is going to do a demo, uh, most likely. We'll finish our scoping work, and at that time, we'll present our statement of work and assign more uh, internal resources. Um, that contract uh, is, you know, you're going to be direct. Um, for the end user, it's going to be direct licensing with Salesforce. It's going to be direct for ProServe with Campango. We're going to pay Intellisys that 20% fee um, that we count partners, uh, and then they will pay you guys according to your existing contracts. we just like to highlight, I know that's a... A lot to take in really quickly, but we just like to highlight how this all works with us. And guys, like I said, please contact me if you have more questions on this. Happy to go through this um, more in depth, a little slower, whatever you need, answer any questions you might have. Love this quote here. Uh, Customer is four times more likely to buy from a competitor if the problem is service related rather than price or product related. And I relate to that directly. You know, I've had experiences, plenty of experiences with consumer goods. I've had times where I've had great products. I've had mediocre products. I've had bad products. And I've had the same with customer experiences. And the one thing that will, that will make me angrier uh, than anything else is if I have an incredibly poor experience with a support agent. Um, so this really rings true to me. And, and, and it's true. You lose a ton of brand loyalty if you don't have uh, quality customer service in place. So what does this mean for the state of customer service? First, let's take a step back and acknowledge that service agents have always been the public facing entities for organizations. Um, they're brand ambassadors, uh, truly, and they can arguably be one of the most instrumental frontline employees in driving a positive uh, brand perception and positive experiences with their consumers. 
they're also a big liability if they aren't good at their jobs and they provide negative brand perception. Um, think about it. A customer service team can make or break a brand, period. Uh, think of your least favorite custom, customer service experience. I'm thinking of one of the ones that I just had in my head <laughs> when I had a really poor experience. And, and what comes to mind as making it so such a bad memory? What, what's that sour taste in your mouth? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, there's, there's a list that called them out and you know uh, Business Insider put together uh, a list of these. And you'll notice that a majority of these are the ones that we depend on most. Um, but what comes to mind for the most stand-up customer service brands, the ones that are doing the best, that provide the best uh, experiences, it's, it's these right here. It's, it's making sure that you have the proper training. It's making sure that you have, you're allowing your agents to create actual relationships with your customers. And it's giving them tools that allow them uh, to accomplish that. So let's get more into uh, what makes a good customer service team and then how Service Cloud enables them uh, to do the, the best job that they can. So high quality training, very key. Uh, capacity of willingness to learn, obviously that's good for any employee, but especially one who will be taking uh, numerous types of service calls, often dealing with uh, angry or disappointed customers. Um, and, and that plays into the third bullet point really importantly here is you need emotional intelligence uh, to be able to provide, uh, you know, quality customer service experiences. Um, and you need technical aptitude in, in today's world. Uh, you know, the best companies are using uh, cloud-based CCAS tools. They're using integrated tech stacks. And, and you have to have some level of, of technical aptitude in order to uh, be a quality customer service rep. Um, you know, obviously having that drive to support organizational growth, always key. Um, you know, there's certain people that do have that longing to help customers resolve issues. And that's one of the most important traits that you can find in a customer service rep. And then what we're really here to talk about today is access to powerful solutions um, that help make them meet that uh, demand. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's where Service Cloud comes into place. So let's get more into that. How does it help? Um, you know, you unleash a more powerful agent experience. You increase case management efficiency because there's automated case creation from email to, sorry, email to form, web to form. Uh, there's automated escalation capabilities. Uh, you're reducing your cost uh, per transaction and call volume because you're able to uh, put in automated bots in place that can handle the most basic requests, uh, which then really drives your agent productivity because you're allowing them to really focus in on those, uh, those cases and those issues that require um, you know, some, some good uh, thought and, and maybe a little bit of extra work. Um, so allowing uh, agents to take those basic calls off their plate and concentrate on that is just going to overall improve uh, the, the outlook for that company's customer service experience. And when you're an agent that isn't having to pan between uh, multiple screens, use a bunch of tabs, you have siloed data everywhere. When you're given those tools that make your job easier and make uh, it easier for you to uh, be successful at what you do, uh, that's going to completely boost the satisfaction levels, um, that worker experience, which um, we always talk about worker experience is just as important as customer experience because obviously if your workers aren't happy, they're not going to provide good customer experiences. Customers aren't going to be happy and it's just uh, uh, comes full circle and uh, nothing's good. <laughs> um, you know, obviously some big names here, um, all service cloud users. Um, obviously a lot of these companies provide fantastic customer service. Um, I'm sure many of you have had personal experiences with these. I um, would love to hear about some of uh, those, uh, you know, at a later date as well. Uh, some additional things here with uh, how service cloud helps. Um, one of the most uh, impactful observations that Campango has witnessed uh, service cloud making on service teams is providing them with visibility uh, through reporting on how their interactions and exchanges on the front lines are contributing to the company's bottom line. It's really important to have that, uh, you know, that analytical functionality and that reportability for your data because you can have all the data in the world, but if you can't actually put in great reporting uh, reports and, and dashboards and allow uh, leadership and management to utilize that data to make um, you know changes and and to to reward uh, you know the, when appropriate um, that's a huge issue 
And being able to put a science to support those agent processes and workflows, providing agents with the right training to meet demands of those workflows, and really being able to boil down what elements of their performance that they're succeeding at, what they need improvement on, um, that's a game-changing way for, for you know, training and, and, and growth, self-growth with agents and, and the ability for management and leadership to provide good experiences for their teams. Um, and it really ties in well to that CCAS and that customer service because you're given a 360 degree view of the customer across all departments. When that customer service rep is, when they're taking that call, they've seen everything else before them. When sales needs to open up that account, they've seen that customer service rep's interactions and the ones before that. Um, if, if there's someone from, uh, you know, if there's a warehousing or product management and, and they need to check on some notes, everyone has access and insight in a single pane of glass into um, you know, that Salesforce instance and into that customer's information and experience. Once again, that automated case management can be incredibly important when you're implement, uh, integrating a CCAS tool with Service Cloud um, and reporting and analytical tools once again. Um, you know, some of the CCAS uh, and the UCAS tools out there, they have some absolutely wonderful tools, wonderful functionality, but analytics and reporting sometimes is one of those areas that really falls short. Uh, and Service Cloud gives you those robust uh, reporting abilities that, that are often missed if you're not integrating uh, to a CRM. And uh, really important here and, and really important over the last few years and going forward is that, that omni-channel, that multi-channel feature ability um, that, that really tailors to today's customer. People are, are contacting in different ways more than ever in, in more ways more than ever. Um, people love social these days, uh, SMS, messaging, WhatsApp, uh, and, and you need to provide your customer service teams with uh, tools that support that. Um, and, and Service Cloud has that incredible native connectability that you can immediately assist um, with contextual video chat, on-screen annotation, you can service multiple customers at one time, you can chat one-on-one -on -one instantly to any type of device. Um, you know, you have access and integrations with all of your social channels. Uh, you can automatically send or pause personalized marketing messages. Uh, it really is such an incredible tool uh, to empower your agents with. And, and I'm going to stop talking now because I really want today to the highlight to be Dan and, and his story surrounding real life, real life uh, use cases uh, of where we've put this tool uh, in place and, and what kind of results we've seen um, from companies. So um, with that, uh, Dan, I'm gonna let you uh, get started with these, uh, these case studies. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, like Jared mentioned, I, I really wanna talk to you a little bit about some of the actual real life use cases where we've been able to uh, have Service Cloud be a very powerful tool for the customer when they didn't have that in the past. Uh, but then also how Campango can be a really useful consulting firm to help the customers uh, learn best practices and improve their processes to find better results. Um, so the first one that we have here was uh, a global leader in residential air quality. Uh, they're actually a fan manufacturer based here in Wisconsin. And when we got to them with the project, the biggest issue that they had was their tech support team and their customer service teams were siloed. They were working in different systems. They didn't have any visibility into what each other was doing. Um, and so it was creating poor customer experiences, but also a lot of additional work for their internal teams. Um, and if you've ever called into a company and given your story and said, you know, I'm having this problem, this is what I'm doing. And of course they ask you, what's your name? What's your address? What's your phone number? So you provide all that detail and then you get back into your issue. And then the rep cuts you off and says, wait, that's not my department. I need you to get to, over to somebody else. And when you make that transfer and then the person picking up the phone has no idea who you are, what you need or what you just told the other rep, uh, that can be very frustrating, right? And I think we've all experienced that. And that's kind of the situation that we were in here. And so the biggest reason to move to Salesforce Service Cloud for them uh, initially was to prevent that, to provide one system where all account information, all phone call history, all emails sent will be in one place. And tech support and customer service can see each other's work. Um, they'll know that those previous cases had happened um, so that on the surface was really the reason for the project. Um, but as we dug into that even more, uh, we really realized that there were even more departments outside of Salesforce that were going to need some of the information that these teams were gathering 
um, like for example, an R&D department or uh, people working on the product development side of things that um, would never have any visibility into the issues that customers were calling in about. So if, for example, one fan was having a certain issue or maybe it was a loud motor, uh, and if tech support and customer service are getting calls on that issue over and over again, the product team has no idea that that's an issue and they're not able to fix it. And so then it just be, continues to be an issue. So one of the things that we did as part of this project was to build an integration to their inventory system um, through a third party integration. And that allowed a component on the page, on the service cloud, uh, case detail page. So when someone would call in, one of the first questions they would ask is what product they owned, or maybe it would be on their account, and they could link that product directly to it, and that would allow for robust reporting on any issues. So now they would be able to see by product, specific part numbers, the number of cases that were logged, what the issues were related to, and they could pass that information on a scheduled basis out to those those other teams that aren't even necessarily in Salesforce. Um, and so that was a really big win um, with them. We also did a Genesis phone integration into Salesforce. Um, and so that was another big thing that customers would call in, customer service would be on the phone, and a lot of other issues would just kind of fall by the wayside, that phone calls were the priority. Um, with Omnichannel, with that integration, the system is smart enough to understand when an agent's busy on a phone call and it can route other cases that are coming in from emails or other places uh, to the reps that are not on the phone that are available. Um, so it really helped the team work better. Um, and part of that was to make that easy transition between customer service and tech support. So if a case got created, you accidentally called the wrong department, they were easily able to transfer you over through that phone system integration the phone call would transfer, the case could transfer, and you'd be in one place, seeing the exact history, the call notes from that call, um, everything would be logged into that customer. So nobody's having to ask those repeat questions. Um, so really, really big win there. Um, the next use case we have, this one is uh, an international real estate giant. So one of the largest real estate firms in, in the country. Um, had a lot of issues. Their teams were getting overwhelmed. It was a small customer service team and they deal with hundreds of thousands of agents across the country, always calling in requesting service. Um, and honestly, their service was a little bit uh, in the past. They, their main bulk of their support was done through telephone um, or emails. And telephone calls are obviously challenging because they can be long, right? You're talking about the current conditions in the country, right? And you're, you're building some rapport, which um, it definitely is good and has its place, but is also not very efficient when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of agents, right? And so um, if you are like me, nowadays you probably don't necessarily want to pick up the phone and ask a basic question to somebody, right? You maybe don't want to have to give all your details and spend 20 minutes on hold. You never know what you're expecting when you pick up the phone, right? Most of us are just intuitively Googling the answers for our, our requests already. Um, and so if customers can help support that type of environment, that self-help that it seems like we've all kind of taught ourselves to go look for on the internet before reaching out, um, that can be a big win for your company. So um, some of the things we did here for this organization, um, number one is we brought all the agents into sales or into Service Cloud, into Salesforce. That gave them access to all the agents' accounts, contacts, all of their information, all of the history on their account, when their franchise began, um, what training they've had. So they have a lot of history. So when they do have to support somebody, they have a lot more detail than just a random phone number calling into the system. Um, and we did also do an integration there uh, with their Cisco phone system to bring the phone calls right into Salesforce, which again, gives that history of previous calls, helps with robust reporting. Uh, but then we also brought in Salesforce knowledge uh, and knowledge is a way to document basically any information that you want for your org. So it's really those self-help articles. It could be FAQs, it could be troubleshooting guides, it could be information about software, whatever those requests that they're typically getting, they would create knowledge articles. Um, and then it was used both internally to help the support teams and externally to help the customers go find their own answers. Um, and the way we did that for them was through a customer community. 
And so in Salesforce, we built the community out, which allowed the agents to have a username and password. Uh, they can log into their account online. They can see their case history, submit new case requests without having to call an agent. Um, they can look through those self-help articles. So if they just wanted to know what their branding guidelines were, where am I allowed to use the logo, they can just search that information. It's right there available for them, but not necessarily available out on the internet to the public, right? So it's just a way to help with that case deflection um, and really support the way that the agents want to be engaged with. Um, one other big benefit of Service Cloud is called digital engagement. Um, and Jared had touched on this in some previous slides, but this is um, a relatively newer product from Salesforce. It is an additional license you can get above and beyond Service Cloud. And that's really adding additional channels of service into Salesforce. It's the things like live chat where you can request to, to chat with an agent real time. I'm sure you've all done that in your own personal experiences with companies. Um, live message is actually text messaging. So just from your, your smartphone, you can text into the phone number for service and just say, hey, I need some help with uh, the branding guidelines. Can I use the logo on my website? And then that text would come in and it would come in the same way right into Service Cloud that any other engagement would, whether it was a case submitted from the community, a live chat, an email, it's just gonna open up a window and that agent can be texting back and forth on their computer, they're entering their response, but it's coming through to the client uh, as a text message. And same with Facebook Messenger. Um, if you've ever gone on a company's Facebook page, you have that ability to, to send a private message. Uh, that is also integrated right into Salesforce the same way. And so if somebody is on the, that main page, has a question, hey, can I use your logo on my website? That, that request is gonna come through in real time and agent is able to reply and answer that. Um, this type of engagement, these digital channels does allow an agent, a customer service rep to handle four times as many cases as a typical phone call. And so this really reduced the stress and helped uh, make the company much more efficient and to make a much better experience for the customers. So I know we're real short on time, happy to expound on any of this or answer any questions about how Service Cloud can, um, can really help your customers provide better service and how Campango can help dig into those needs. Hey, thank you, Dan. Uh, really appreciate that. You know, obviously you've been far more in the weeds and are far more technically capable than I am. So it's always really nice to get uh, your perspective uh, and, and get your storytelling um, added to it. So thank you for that. You bet, uh, thanks. Like Dan said, we're almost at time here. So real quick, we just want to highlight um, some qualifying questions um, that you guys can start um, turning those gears about. Um, you know, these are a lot of the, that high level um, specifically related to the talk tracks we've gone over today um, that can help uncover uh, some of those opportunities. Um, remember, we're going to be sending this out, so um, no need to jot these down. Um, we also have plenty of uh, educational materials, um, you know, webinars, uh, data sheets, trainings, uh, stuff, things of that nature on both uh, my Intellisys and at the Cloud uh, uh, Services University that Intellisys runs. Um, keep an eye out for more webinars um, in the future. Uh, and, and thank you all for coming today. Uh, I don't currently see any questions. Um, so unless anyone has anything at this instant, uh, we'll just say once again, thank you for attending today. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and hope to see you all again soon. Thank you.